So the first speaker is Dr. Shah, the Commissioner of the Department of Health. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Farrell, DeFrancisco, Hannon and Gottfried, Senators Rivera and Breslin, and Assembly Members Rea and Oaks, and all of the colleagues here today. I'm Dr. Nirav Shah, Commissioner of the New York State Department of Health, and I'm pleased to join you today to share Governor Andrew Cuomo's executive budget as it relates to the Department of Health. I'd like to now spend a few minutes updating you on the activities of the department since we last met. As you are all aware, I am still in the process of reviewing the science on hydrofracking. I am sure that the science will be reflected in my final recommendations, but the process must be done carefully, deliberately, and with objectivity. And the next questioner is uh, Senator Hoyleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shaw, for being here. I'm impressed that you're sitting alone. Um, and uh, you've got a lot on your plate. I wanted to compliment you first for your foresight, your diligence. Uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I admire you for a lot of the initiatives you've undertaken. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, though, uh, about the status of your report on hydraulic fracturing. And in particular, if you could give us an update, um, who you're consulting with, uh, whether you're going to be having any public hearings. And I'm particularly interested in chemicals that have been found uh, as a result of contamination. Uh, there was a Los Angeles Times article recently you probably are familiar with. Uh, that a study from the University of Missouri showed that some of the chemicals can actually disrupt hormones and have led to fears of birth defects, infertility, cancer, near sites that have been sampled. Um, and this is in Colorado. Um, and that's in addition to the 350 instances of groundwater contamination in Colorado. Uh, for more than 2,000 uh, gas spills. Um, are you familiar with that study? Um, can you give us a status on your health report? And will you be uh, taking public testimony uh, through that process? So I was charged with a very specific set of um, uh, requests from C Commissioner Martens of DEC. And as part of that, what I am conducting is a health review. I'm reviewing the existing literature out there uh, from all available sources to look at what are the potential health impacts. Does our regulatory framework mitigate those risks? Uh, and if not, what else could be done to do that? When we started, we were optimistic. We thought that we could be finished with this review very quickly. As we've uh, taken time to understand what's going on, there is a lot more out there. And I'm in no hurry to play with any potential risks with the health and safety of New Yorkers. So I am not in a hurry to finish my report until I am at a tipping point of the data. What does that mean? We know that there are ongoing studies. The studies you cited, for example, go back to 1996 in terms of the kinds of patients they enrolled and the kinds of uh, birth defects that were looked at and other things. What happened in 1996 is very different than what's going on today. So to the extent that I'm looking at the relevance of research, how it pertains to what New York is proposing under the SGEIS framework, you know, what is the, uh, the evolving nature of the, uh, of the technology, all of that has to play a role. And that's why it's taken much more time and much more energy, and, and it's been a much deeper research review than I originally anticipated. So I'm not in, in a hurry to finish this research review. To the extent that I will uh, fulfill my charge and report back to the commissioner, uh, to Commissioner Martens, the, uh, the review when I'm ready, that is the extent of my plans. So are, are you consulting with uh, experts in a, in a public forum, is, or is this uh, mostly uh, a private study? Well, th this is a highly emotionally charged area. And to the extent that we want to be objective, and scientific and stick to the facts. We are continuing our work as needed, reaching out to whoever, uh, whoever I need to reach out to. I've in the past uh, flown around to other experts around the country. We've engaged folks in, in the past uh, individually. 
um, and we will do whatever we need to do to make sure that the review is thorough and complete when it is de delivered. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Young. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, first of all, I'd like to deliver a sincere and hard Thank you. I also wanted to follow up on a question regarding the uh, hydraulic fracturing. Um, you indicated that you were reviewing the science um, and, and, you know, obviously looking at a thorough review, but is there a thorough review uh, that would be more focused on a public um, access, a, a public voice, a public process that has more transparency in, in terms of the public providing their responses, experts in the field, um, scientists, physicians, those who uh, could provide the health input that, from the experts in, in a very public forum um, that would, um, you know, offer to, to those in all over this state a, a sense that there is a, a, that kind of review and the experts can share uh, publicly as well as the public comment. Um, is that something that, you know, is being considered, a, and I would suggest that it's something that should be done um, to provide more confidence in the community that this re scientific review is something that we can understand better in a public forum? Thank you for your question. You know, I am, um, there are absolutely important roles for transparency. It helps the process in many ways. When it comes to certain types of science, however, um, there is a role for having transparency at a certain point. There has to be an objective period during which time the science is allowed to go where it goes. For example, the, the complexity of some of these studies, when they were done, how, over what period they were studied, how the measurements were taken, um, it, it's, it's much more complex than something that a two-minute public conversation or a testimony can allow. On the other hand, afterwards, Absolutely. Check every single assumption. Check every single fact. Check how we got from where we started to where we are today. And openly look at it. Dissect it. The, the issue is when do you do that? And, and right now it's changing so quickly. There's so many studies coming out that I'm not prepared yet to share that or start that conversation today uh, in a forum that will just add to confusion and will distract from the work that is going on. But, but we, as moving forward, there will be uh, a public um, forum. You know, uh, to the extent that I've been asked to deliver a report to Commissioner Martens, I will deliver my report to Commissioner Martens, and then he can choose to do whatever he likes with it. Being issues, and I am in favor of supporting anyone and everyone who can show what they're going to give as a result of it. And can so I we've ask? Been very um, that way. Sorry, thank you. C can I ask? How much money are we spending on the, the health study for, for fracking? I, I can't seem to get a number on that. What is the total that we've spent to date on studying the, the health impact of fracking? We've spent uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. So we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars studying a substance such as natural gas. We can't, we can't drink it. We can't use it to irrigate our crops. But we're only spending $50,000 on researching something like tick-borne illness which is affecting people right now. I mean, right now, people are really, really suffering from this disease. I would hope that you would advocate for, for uh, an extreme uh, addition to, to the funding that we're currently providing and, 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 and allow New York State to take the lead in really trying to help those people that are, have no other place to look right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Assemblywoman Rosenthal. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shah, um, for your previous comments. Um, a lot of people in my district and a lot of people, which is the Upper West Side and parts of Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, um, but they are very concerned about their drinking water, but not just that. They're concerned about the impact of fracking on the entire state. So I know you've been asked questions about the health study. Um, I know DEC held hearings um, to get input and got tens of thousands of <laughs> comments about the fracking. But for the health study portion, did the health department conduct any kind of um, open hearing to receive comments about it? No. Do you, so you don't have to under, under the process? 
I was just asked of a very specific series of charges by Commissioner Martens to review the state of the SGEIS and to give recommendations on its adequacy relative to protecting the health of New Yorkers. My health review will do that. I will deliver it to him when I am comfortable, at which point he can decide what he wants to do with it. Okay. So when, when was that begun? I'm sorry? When did that process <coughs> begin internally? Uh, a, November of not last year, the year before. November of 12. 2012? Yes. Okay. So can you describe how that process has been going on in your office? Like who's assigned to it? How many people are assigned to it? What is the scope of their investigation? So the scope of the investigation has been publicly described, and we have talked about the specific charges of what we're looking at. We're looking at ongoing, existing uh, studies across, that impact health related to high-volume hydrofracking. Okay. To the extent that there were over 40 such studies published last year alone, uh, we are reviewing them. And we have adequate staff between ourselves and others to make sure that we understand each study as it comes out relative to its uh, pertinence to New York. You know, is this a study done in 1996 uh, when they were using very different chemicals in a very different place? Does it relate to Marcellus Shale or is it different sets of conditions relative to ours? So we've had a series of questions that we've been asking as studies come out. We look at its relevance, we look at its pertinence, we look at its actual health relevance, and we're starting to put together our understanding across all areas of health, what does high volume hydrofracking uh, impact? And if it does, how do you mitigate it? What do you do with it? All, all of those questions are on the, uh, on the public, uh, in the public debate already. How many staff members do you have uh, dedicated to this study? It varies depending on when. So early on we had more, now we have fewer. To the extent that it varies over time as new studies come out, we're also working with our federal partners. We're working with folks in Pennsylvania. We're working with uh, folks in California and Illinois and Texas. It varies depending on the studies that come out. As they come out, we bring appropriate attention to them. Okay, I, I appreciate that, but I, I'd like to know in terms of sheer numbers. Do you have three people in your office or, you know, 10 people, can, can you give me a better picture? Yeah, it, it can be up to several dozen people. It can be as few as <laughs> maybe half a dozen on any given time. Okay. Um, there were some recent reports. Um, I think it was about Pennsylvania that um, animals were dying, and it, it is the veritable canary in the coal mine, although these are, these are land animals who have been affected by the, the water runoff that's toxic and they've been exposed, they've been drinking it, and other, other um, scenarios. Um, do those kinds of things trouble you? Animals dying absolutely trouble me. From, well, I didn't mean to throw you a softball. I meant in relation to um, the adverse effects of fracking in those areas where there has been fracking and then the runoff or the, what, what scientists say are the result of fracking that has directly affected the lives, health of the animals. We're looking at all available evidence that potentially could impact on our review of human health. Okay. So to the extent that there are studies that are very good and there are studies that are very bad. Like what's a bad study? What's a bad study? A bad study. <laughs> A bad study is one that has no relationship to what might potentially happen in New York. A good study is one that has potential impact on human health, well described, well characterized, with conditions similar to New York State. Okay, but conditions in New York State aren't, aren't set yet. That's right? exactly the point. Why, so how do you... That's why I'm not done yet. Well, I mean, which comes first? It's a work in progress to the extent that you, if, you know, what, I, what I've said in the past is that with human health, I'm not willing to take any chances. And I will take the time it takes. There are, for example, large studies coming out from the feds on water impacts related to health. When there is a tipping point of data that can point you one way or another, my report will be ready. As of today, there is no tipping point. Okay, what, can you describe what the tipping point might be? And I'll tell you why I keep asking you this, yeah. is because so many people around the state are very anxious to hear where this administration 
um, comes out on this issue. Uh, you know that there's a, a wealth of opposition. There are some who are for it, but those of course, of course are usually have a personal stake in it or a monetary stake as in the corporations. But you know, it, if this goes forward and there's a, a mistake, it's not something we can take back. So I understand you're, you're interested in having a robust study come out. So to the extent that as we have, we're guided by the science, we attempt to do what we do in a space where we're objective, we're clear, and it's reproducible, to the extent that when we're done, anyone can challenge any or all of our assumptions, that will be an opportunity for you and everyone else to say this works, this doesn't work for me. Right now it's very emotional and we're staying away from the emotions, we're sticking to the science as much as possible. I don't have a date because I don't know if that one definitive study on health is gonna come out tomorrow or it'll never come out. The reality is there is an accumulating body of evidence. It's changing over time. The studies that you refer to go back to 1996 in terms of human health. There are other studies that are more recent. The nature of the industry has changed over time. It is a moving target. And so I don't have a tipping point clarified until I see it. And, and, and the point is, it will be public at some point. When it is public, everyone will have an opportunity to look at all of the assumptions, all of the studies included, and challenge any or all of our uh, findings. Thank you. Wait, I have, I'm sorry, I have no, one no. last, no. one no. sentence, no. one, one sentence. I you have two questions to me. I'm sorry, I meant one, one topic. My one final thing is I have a, a packet here of 150 peer-reviewed studies that just came out in 2013, compiled by physicians, <laughs> scientists, and engineers for healthy and energy, so I'd like to submit them on the record for your perusal and, and the people in your department to look for they are recent studies, which I think will be helpful in your study. Thank you. Thank you.